is CBS News Miami. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. I'm Naja Sherman and welcome to CBS News Miami's 4 p.m. Quickcast. Let's take a look at today's top stories. <laughs> It was Panthers mania and Pompano Beach this morning. Matthew, Panthers forward Matthew Kachuk showed up at Raising Cane's and he got behind the counter to serve up some meals to fans. CBS News Miami's Steve Majiri was at the restaurant and he spoke to some of those lucky customers and the Panther star himself. I'm Steve Majiri in Pompano Beach, where a flash flood of Panthers fans got to see Matthew Kachuk work his shift at Raising Cane's ahead of the parade. Matthew Kachuk got here just before 10 a.m. He was welcomed by hundreds of fans that got their spot in line hours ahead of time just to get a glimpse of him. The Panthers star put on the shirt and hat and even worked the drive through and fans were in awe that one of their players actually got to serve them. Kachuk did bring the Stanley Cup with him, but he did not bring it inside of the restaurant. Coming up later tonight, you'll get a full glimpse of the fan that was out here today in Pompano Beach, Steve Majiri, CBS News, Miami. And we are counting down to the big parade. CBS News Miami Morning Edition will have a special show live from the parade route at 7 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. Facing South Florida airs from 7.30 a.m. to 8 a.m. Then CBS News Miami Morning Edition is back live from Fort Lauderdale from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. And do not miss our live team coverage of Sunday's championship parade. You can join us live right here starting at 10.30 in the morning. We can't wait. Always alerting, always tracking. This is Next Weather. And taking a live look outside, it is a day of heat and humidity, and we could see a few storms today. Let's get right to Next Weather. Meteorologist Cindy Pressler with a look ahead. So far, so good. We haven't seen much, but if you look behind me, we've got towering cumulus clouds trying to develop now, so there is juice available. All we need to do is put these little sea breezes into play and some outflow boundaries, and we should have a few showers and storms yet this afternoon. 91 degrees. Ooh, it is sticky. Look at that. The feels like temperature now 102. Ah. But the high today so far has been 93 degrees at Miami, so very, very warm. And here you can see that little boundary. Here's the East Coast uh, sea breeze trying to come in now. So we did have a few showers developing in Broward and one that was trying to develop down here in Miami Dade, but so far it has been dry. So we'll see what happens later on today. We still have plenty of time. We've got daytime heating going on right now, so we'll see what happens. And that little, uh, now you see it. There's a little outflow boundary when they come together and they meet. That should start to develop some showers and storms. Our modeling certainly thinks that we will have some. Uh, it's about five o'clock tonight. Broward County down to Miami Dade. We should have some showers and storms. A little less than we have seen the last couple of days, though. In 7 o'clock, still a few hanging on before they dissipate later this evening and then we dry out. Tomorrow, we're going to see more showers and storms. A lot going on in the tropics right now. Yes, even this early in the season, Hurricane Center is watching two areas. Let's go to the first one. This one uh, coming into uh, eventually the Gulf of Mexico. Low chance, though, for development here. If it's going to happen, it'll be over the next few days right here across the southern Gulf of Mexico. We'll Keep an eye on that one. That one's expected to make its way to the west, so not any threat for us. This is the interesting one now. This is up uh, to a high chance, 80% chance that that tropical wave, you can even see some rotation there, some little spin. They are expecting this now to likely, most likely become either a tropical depression or a tropical storm. The modeling wants to take it to the west, something we're going to be watching. This one will become barrel the way it looks as we head into the weekend. We do have Saharan dust out here. That's going to be making its way into South Florida as we head into the weekend, and that could help us out this Sunday for the parade, the Panthers parade. If we get some of that dust in there, that tends to suppress showers and thunderstorms. However, there still is a chance in the forecast, about a 20 to 30, maybe 40% chance for a spot shower. It starts at 11 a.m. So we have a chance for some rain around 10, maybe a noontime backing off. Temperatures will be warm. It is going to be sticky. Prepare for that. Drink lots of water, but we're hoping for a really nice day for that. Here's your forecast tomorrow. We will have some scattered showers and thunderstorms. That flow is changing back to an east southeasterly direction. Next week, a chance for a storm each day with highs in the lower 90s. 
Turning now to an update on the missing paddle boarder. The family of 29 year old Luciano Mercenari says the Coast Guard has expanded their search into the ocean. Family members took to social media. They asked pilots with planes or helicopters and bo boaters to join the search efforts. They also offered to pay for expenses. Chopper 4 over the scene of a bad crash at Hialeah. Two cars were severely damaged. One of them crashed inside a home. Second one, a mangled mess. It was just feet away on the lawn. Police were on the scene. No word yet on what caused the crash or if anyone was hurt. A man accused of a disturbing crime in South Miami. CBS News Miami's Peter Dench reports. There is a safety alert in this story because of what South Miami Police Sergeant Fernando Bosch is saying. He says there may be other victims and the suspect has been arrested before for voyeurism. Ring cam video shows the suspect, 62-year-old Dean Post, of the victim's home. According to police, she had discovered that he had been entering her property on and off for two months. But it wasn't until she saw him last week and confronted him and police were called. Now, another video that we have obtained shows him using a floor panel from the victim's shed to cover his face. Bosch says that Post had been arrested in November of last year for voyeurism after setting up a camera at another home and watching someone. We're, we're concerned because we think that uh, this guy's done it before. Uh, he, he's continuing to do this kind of uh, uh, activity, and we believe that there might be other victims out there. Uh, that might not know who this guy is, and uh, we, we want to know. Vosh said Post has been arrested for burglary and theft in violation of the probation that he was on after his conviction from last year. In bond court, a judge found probable cause for the charges against him and ordered him to stay away from the victims. Coming up at 5 in just an hour, we will have much more on this story. At South Miami Police Headquarters, Peter Dench, CBS News, Miami. Three people, including two, pol two police officers, were taken to the hospital. It's after a bad crash in southwest Miami-Dade. Chopper 4 was over the scene. This is along southwest 197th Street and 114th Avenue. It appears that the police cruiser collided with a silver car at the intersection, caused the cruiser to slam through a gate and onto the side of a house. No word yet on what caused the crash. Everyone is expected to be okay. The 4th of July is just a week away and the travel rush has already started. The FAA predicts today will be the busiest air travel day of the year. So far, nearly 54,000 flights are expected to take off today. The FAA discussed summer air travel and how the agency deals with bad weather. Take a listen. We have a command center in Virginia that coordinates among all the centers and with the airlines to make sure we're routing traffic around thunderstorms. That's the main concern this type of year. We've opened up some additional routes. The military gives us some extra airspace to use. Uh, we open new routes over the Gulf of Mexico and some higher altitude routes. So we try to keep that mix going. But if the storms act up, it, it will result in delays. The TSA is, expects to screen more than 32 million people from today through Monday, July 8th. The Midwest has taken a pounding this week. Historic flooding has damaged farming communities. It's raising fears that food prices will go up again. CBS News Miami's Jonah Kaplan speaks to farm owners in South Dakota. You can see water was at least this deep in here. Another day, another cleanup in Union County, South Dakota. This was Dave and Judy Oberg's home on Sunday. Yesterday, they took us inside to see what's left of it. You're going to lose furniture, you're going to lose appliances, but with this house, you're losing a piece of yourself. That's right. It will never be the same. I've lived in this house my whole life. Here's what they could save in this trailer, a box of important documents that includes the deed to all their property, which for generations has been used for farming. This wasn't supposed to be. No, we're not supposed to have a beach here. <laughs> Collectively, Judy and Dave's extended family farms nearly 3,000 acres here. Now, most of their crop is gone before it's fully grown. What's remarkable to think about is that just last week, all of this, hundreds of acres of soybeans, and over here, hundreds of acres of corn. What's also remarkable to consider is how much we Americans depend on these crops. Corn and soybeans aren't just used for food. They're also found in everything from paint and soap to car seats and tires, even ethanol fuel. 
agricultural economist Ben Brown. That area tends to be one of our prime growing regions in the United States. I think we could see about a 3 million acre reduction in total in corn and soybeans within Minnesota, South Dakota, and Iowa. Brown estimates the long-term impact on prices will be relatively small as long as other domestic and international producers are able to meet demand. But as climate change makes catastrophic flooding events like this more common across the globe, that's hardly a given. Does this make you think more about climate change? It, it does, yeah. We wonder about it, you know, what, what's going to happen in 100 years or 50 years or 10 years. Farmers do have something called crop insurance, but the farmers we spoke with warn that won't even cover half their losses, not after already paying for things like fuel, for fertilizer, for seed, for the labor. And there's more rain that could be coming to parts of Iowa, Nebraska, and Kansas, putting more pressure on those already swollen rivers that continue to rise. Jonah Kaplan, CBS News, Jefferson, South Dakota. That's the CBS News Miami QuickCast. I'm Naja Sherman. Stay tuned for more news right here on CBS News Miami and have a wonderful day.